In this lecture, we're going to look at arc length. So if we have some curve, then arc length is what you think it is. It's the length of the curve. To understand why this formula is what it is, I like to think of arc length, though, as the distance that the curve travels. So in particular, if this curve is parametrized by r of t, where this point is, say, r of a, and this point is r of b, and I would like to compute the length of this curve going from r of a to r of b, then that's the distance I would travel as I move from r of a to r of b. And the reason I like to think of it that way is that distance can be calculated as speed times time. Right, so it's like if you're traveling 60 miles an hour and you travel for two hours, then we know that you go 120 miles. So that's the relationship between distance, speed, and time. So if R of t is a smoothly parametrized curve, then the arc length of the curve from R of a to R of b, or in other words, the total distance that we travel as we move from R of a to R of b along this curve, is the integral from a to b of the speed of the parametrization, so that's the length of the velocity vector r prime, dt. So of course the length of the velocity vector is the speed, and we can think of dt as like a little change in time. Let's start with an example of an arc length that we know very well. So find the arc length of r of t equals cosine of t sine of t going from 0 to 2 pi. So this is the arc length of the unit circle. We expect the answer to be 2 pi. To check that with this formula, let's go ahead and compute the velocity vector. So r prime of t is going to be negative sine of t cosine of t. That tells us that the speed along this parametrization is the length of r prime. So that's going to be the square root of negative sine of t squared plus cosine squared. So we get square root of 1, which is 1. This is a unit speed parametrization. So according to this formula, the arc length should be the integral from 0 to 2 pi 1 dt. So the antiderivative is t going from 0 to 2 pi. And as expected, we get an arc length of 2 pi. Let's do a different example. So let's find the arc length of the parametric curve r of t equals cosine of 2t t t squared from t equals 1 to t equals 8. OK, so we need the velocity vector, then we'll get the speed. So r prime of t is negative 2 sine 2t, 1, 2t. So the speed is the length of r prime. And that tells us that the length from 1 to 8 is going to be the integral from 1 to 8 of this square root. So the square root of 4 sine squared 2t plus 1 plus 4t squared. We can't integrate that by hand, but I can do it numerically. So using Wolfram, I got an arc length of about 64.4. This is just a reminder that sometimes in life, you have an integral and you can't actually solve it by hand. We're going to introduce in a new notation now, the arc length function. This builds off of the arc length formula that we just looked at. So the arc length formula gave us a way to compute the arc length from t equals a to t equals b, or in other words, the distance that we travel from r of a to r of b. But suppose I actually want to think of my ending point as a variable. So I would like a way to calculate the arc length from r of a to r of b perhaps, but also r of any other input. Instead of having to calculate that manually each time for each input, we define a function of that input. So wherever we cut off our distance, wherever we stop measuring the arc length, we're going to treat that like a variable to define the arc length function, which we denote s of t. And it's the integral from the starting point a, 
to the cutoff t of, I have to be careful here, I'm going to write the length of r prime of u du. The reason why I'm writing the length of r prime of u du is because we're already using t up here. So since I'm already using t in the bounds of integration, I don't want to overuse the letter t. It would have a different meaning in the integrand. So I'm switching to the letter u. Sometimes this kind of replacement variable is called a dummy variable. By one of our favorite theorems, the fundamental theorem of calculus, I can actually differentiate this new function s with respect to t. Now there are two parts of the fundamental theorem of calculus. One part that people are really familiar with, the part that tells you how to evaluate a definite integral by using antiderivatives. This is the other part. So recall, if our integrand function f is continuous, then the derivative of an integral, which looks a lot like the integral that we wrote above, so I'll write from a to t, f of u du, is actually just f of t. And that's because differentiation and integration are inverse processes. So in particular, to apply this part of the fundamental theorem of calculus to this problem, s prime of t is actually just the speed. We can apply this because we're assuming that we have a smooth parametrization. So that means that it's twice differentiable, so its first derivative is continuous, so the speed is continuous. Okay, let's finish with an example of finding the arc length function that we just described for the parametric curve r of t equals 2t, t cubed over 3, t squared, starting from t equals 0. Just as before, the first thing we need to do is compute the velocity vector and the speed. So I'll do that pretty quickly. So we're going to have r prime of t is 2, t squared, 2t. That's just term by term differentiation. Now we can compute the speed. So the length of this velocity vector is going to be the square root of 4 plus t to the fourth plus 4t four squared. We can actually simplify this. Let me order it in standard order, so in decreasing powers of t. So that's the square root of t to the fourth plus 4t four squared plus 4. And then that actually factors perfectly. That's the square root of the quantity t squared plus 2 squared. So we get that the speed simplifies to t squared plus 2. Now we can write down the arc length function. So s of t is going to be the integral from our starting value of 0 to t, that's our choice of cutoff, of the integrand u squared plus 2 du, where I'm careful here to switch from what I was calling t to this new variable u just so that we can compute the integration. This is just a polynomial, so we just anti-differentiate in the usual way, and we get u cubed divided by 3 plus 2u, and then we're going to evaluate this at the bounds of 0 and t. So overall, the arc length function is s of t equals t cubed divided by 3 plus 2t. Now we've found the arc length function, but let me check the relationship between the derivative of the arc length function and the speed that I just mentioned. So in particular, let's check that s prime returns us the speed. So the derivative of our arc length function s with respect to t is t squared plus 2, and indeed that is the speed. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lecture on arc length of the arc length function. See you next time.